Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about integrals, population, and what are called radial density functions. So these are slightly different density functions, which come from slightly different problems. So let's see what the problem looks like. So we have a city that's gonna be around a circular lake that has a radius of 1.5 miles, which is an enormous lake, but I didn't think of it until after I had already made the video, so it's gonna be 1.5 miles. Um, the outer edge of the city is six miles from the center of the lake. Um, the population density, which is rho of r, is gonna be 6,000 over five plus r people per square mile. So what's happening here is as you get farther from the center, the population density is decreasing, which actually happens pretty commonly in real life. Um, and so r is the distance from the center of the lake. And the problem is to find the total population. So what we're gonna do is draw a picture and start working off a picture. So we're gonna end up with a figure. I had a lot of trouble drawing this, so I ended up just using GeoGebra to create some graphics. It ended up taking forever, um, but here we go. So here is essentially what we're dealing with. So we have a lake that has a radius of 1.5 miles. So that's kind of that blue circle in the middle there. And then the rest of this thing is the city. So all of that is the city. So the city goes from a radius of 1.5 miles, so 1.5 miles from the center of the lake, um, all the way out to six miles from the center of the lake. Um, and everything between 0 and 1.5 is just kind of dead space. I mean, it's the lake. Nothing lives there, or no people live there at least. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to use our Riemann sum approach. And what that means is we need to slice this up somehow. So we're going to slice, and the way we do that is we end up with this. A lot of concentric circles. And once we have our concentric circles, they actually are creating these concentric, uh, I don't know, hollowed out circles or something. Um, so what we want to do is analyze each of those slices. So we're going to look at the slices, and to help with that, I colored them. Um, so we're going to look at these. So everything's kind of colored in. So on the next page, what I'm going to do is really zoom in on kind of the first quadrant of that. So here we go. Um, and if you look at this, we've made slices. So let's say we've made n slices. Um, so there's a, a delta r going on, right? So from r equals 1.5 to r equals 6. We create a delta r, so this distance is delta r, and this is the same, and this, and it turns out that just all of these are gonna be delta r. So we got a lot of delta r's, and now what we need to do is we need to think about um, what our radius is gonna be for each slice. So like the first pink one, and then the green one, then blue, and then I guess blue again. Um, so for the first one, what we're gonna do, or actually in general for all of them, we're gonna to agree to use the larger of the radii, um, so the first one, it's like one of the radii is 1.5, and then if you move a little, you get 1.5 plus delta R. We're going to use the larger one. So R1 is going to be here, and R1, you can kind of see, is 1.5 plus delta R. And then when we go to the next strip, we go out a little further, so it's going to be 1.5 plus 2 delta Rs. And we can keep going in this way, so R3 is going to be 1.5 plus 3 delta Rs. And then ultimately, since we're making n slices, We'll end up here at r sub n. And if you wanted to, you could think of it as r sub i, so the i if slice, um, is gonna be that 1.5 where we're starting. And then you just keep adding delta r's um, i times, so plus i times delta r. Okay, so that's gonna be our r sub i, which is important to think about because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually cut these and then straighten them out. And they actually basically become rectangles or at least when we let delta r approach zero, they become indistinguishable from rectangles. So uh, if we look at that, here's our, our completely circular picture. And then I cut it, I straighten it out, I colored it correctly, if you're uh, really into that. It took a really long time and probably wasn't worthwhile, but I hope you're enjoying it. Um, so we're gonna find the area of each of these. So uh, for the first one, the smallest one, we're using r1 as our radius, so that length so the, the equal spaces are all delta r's. The lengths are all the circumferences of the circles. So it's gonna be two pi r1, and then times delta r. That's the area of that. And then what we could do to find the population in that slice is just multiply the area by the population density. Um, and so we can find this for the second slice. And we can keep going all the way up until we get to our nth slice. So that's gonna be two pi r sub n, and then delta r. 
So now we know all the areas, and what we want to do is we want to find the population in each of these strips. So to do that, we're going to do the area of the strip, and then we're going to multiply by the population density within it, and that'll work out to the total population. So population in strip i is going to be the area of strip i, so 2 pi r sub i delta r times rho of r sub i. Um, so that gives us people, and then uh, that's only in one strip, so we want to add up all of the strips, and that's a summation. So we're, we're getting really close to an integral anytime the summation shows up. Um, so we're just building this here. Uh, when you generally do these problems, you don't go through the entire process because eventually you get really comfortable with it and you just jump to the integral, which is obviously going to be less work. So if we let n approach infinity, all of our delta r's will, will get smaller and smaller and our summation will actually turn into our integral. And so we're going to end up with uh, the integral. Now we need to figure out what r. So it's delta r, so we need to know the r values for our bounds. If we go back to the original, we know that the lake goes from 0 to 1.5, the city goes from 1.5 to 6, so those are actually our bounds. So here's our city, so it's going to be 1.5 out to 6, then it's 2 pi. Um, when we take the limit r sub i, it just gets replaced by r. Um, delta r becomes uh, dr, and rho of r sub i becomes rho of r, and so then dr. So that's actually what we're doing. If you remember, I gave you a uh, radial density function at the way beginning of this. You could rewind or maybe screenshot that. Um, this was our radial density function. Rho of r is 6,000 over 5 plus r. So what I did at this point was I just grabbed my calculator, had to evaluate this, and I got um, approximately 70,480 people live in the city, um, which I don't even know if that's a lot based on this city. Um, so what I want to do now is just kind of summarize so that you don't have to go through the process every time. But I think the process is really good to know. So here we go. Uh, in general, uh, when you have a radial density function to find the population from it, uh, what you're going to do is the integral from a to b of 2 pi r times rho of r dr. And then a is the radius where the city starts, b is the radius where the city ends, and rho of r is the density r units from the center of whatever, usually it's a lake, but you don't really know until you read the problem. Okay, um, that's the whole thing. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.